Amazon has a, a vast number of the investor class who are just placing bets on it. And Jeff is cashing in the bets. If he had actually kept his share of Amazon's profits, he'd be worth about $4 billion. We think Amazon is going to be so successful for so long that we're going to give them 90 years worth of their profits in stock price today. This whole idea that all of the value that is possible to extract should be extracted for the purpose of corporate profits and shareholder value is a fundamentally antisocial idea. I think we have a real problem in the way we talk about the value that companies create. And I, I actually was right before COVID hit, I was just about finished uh, writing a piece entitled Why Jeff Bezos is the Richest Man in the World. The thesis is it, still very relevant when people say, oh my gosh, Jeff is so rich and he doesn't pay his workers enough. They don't realize that the reason why Jeff is so rich doesn't actually have very much with what's produced by Amazon. It has to do with the fact that Amazon has a, a vast number of the investor class who are just placing bets on it. And Jeff is cashing in the bets. You know, I have a private company. I compete with Amazon, actually, I, less so today, you know, in the sense that uh, they're no longer much, uh, the books are not, you know, central to their business. But you know, we would sell books directly on O'Reilly.com and they, would, they were selling our books on Amazon. And, um, you know, but I get a dollar of profit. I get a dollar. At that point, when Jeff got a dollar of profit, he got $250 of stock price gain because people were betting so heavily on him. Even today, Amazon gets $90 uh, for every dollar of profit. And so, you know, if Jeff, and I actually did an exercise, uh, you know, again, this kind of goes back to a, a wonderful quote from ben, Benjamin Graham, who was uh, the mentor for Warren Buffett, author of a book uh, called The Intelligent Investor. And uh, he said, in the, in the short term, the market uh, is a voting machine. In uh, the long term, it's a, uh, a um, weighing machine. And I actually prefer to use the, the term betting machine than, than voting machine because it's really become more like betting than voting. But if you think about it this way, uh, I, you know, I, let's just say that a company uh, has a 10% profit margin. Actually, let's, let, we're talking so, uh, a software company, right? Let, 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 so let's talk about you know, a company with a 30% profit margin because software companies make a lot of money. And you, you know, the, the, the Benjamin Graham weighing machine approach would be to say, well, how long do you think they're going to make that kind of money? How, how fast are they going to grow? Uh, what's it going to look like over the next 10 years? Because if I bought that company, if I owned a share of that company, I'd get that money, right? i get its earnings. So uh, if it's going to make 30% and it's growing at 20% a year, you know, you do the math and you kind of come up with a price. And that's why, you know, on, on a um, you know, typical, uh, you know, I mean, there's more sophisticated measures today, but, you know, they still report on the price to earnings ratio. That is, this stock is, is trading at 20 times earnings or 30 times earnings. Um, and, uh, you know, but when you start thinking about what's a reasonable amount, you know, uh, stock market valuations are crazy right now. You know, the, 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 uh, the average uh, price earnings multiple of the Fortune 500 in, in the U.S. is about 26, or at least, uh, again, I haven't checked recently, but that's where it was when I was writing this piece. Uh, that means that you're saying, oh, yeah, we actually think that uh, it's worth paying, you know, like take, take a share of a company like... Uh, you know, I don't know, Ford Motor, you know, that they're going to keep making money at the same rate they are today, uh, that we should give them for, for, you know, enough, we give them 26 years of their profits today, right, to walk off with. And we think Amazon is going to be so successful for so long that we're going to give them 90 years worth of their profits in stock price today. You know, so they're the weighing machine, you know, like, it's very rare that a tech company continues to be that valuable. So what people are really doing is they're just placing bets. They're placing short-term bets. They're kind of going, right now, I'm betting that uh, other people are going to think that, that uh, Amazon's worth this much and it's going to go up. And, and, and it's this game uh, with this too much capital chasing returns. And it's really unmoored from the fundamentals of the business. 
which means that companies no longer get the feedback that says, you need to do things for the long term. They get the feedback that says, do things for the short term, make the, you know, the betters happy, and, uh, and, 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 and then cash out. And, and anyway, the, po the point of all this, the point of all this weighing machine and betting machine thing is that, you know, you know, we talk about Jeff Bezos, the richest man in the world, and before his divorce, I think it was 159 billion. Uh, I don't know what it is right now, but I did the math back then. I said if, if he had actually kept his share of Amazon, his, of Amazon's profits since Amazon was founded, uh, he'd be worth about four billion dollars. Right. So, on the other hand, uh, it's kind of interesting because uh, Google uh, doesn't fail the weighing machine, you know, the betting machine versus the weighing machine test. If Larry and Sergey actually just kept all their Google stock and they kept their share of Google's accumulated profits, they'd actually be richer than they are today. It's those short-term quarterly calls which are promoting this behavior of what exactly you're talking about, which is That's right. you're diluting the value, you're squeezing the supply, you're vertically integrating to extract that value out of the suppliers in the short term. That's right. And long term, that should be detrimental to the platform. And in the multiples, I just looked it up. Amazon is 118 PE multiple. And given the pandemic and everything that's going on, we've, we've actually seen these stocks at an all-time high. They've actually even eclipsed where they were back in February, many of them. So you know, when you look at this long term, you look at an Amazon, you look at a Google where they all have like one very dominant, one or two very dominant monopolies, Google with Google search. They've got Android. It doesn't really monetize nearly as well as Google search. It's kind of like a nice moat around Google search. Amazon has the marketplace, huge monopoly. When you look at the amount of kind of flesh they're extracting, this value exchange, cramming down suppliers in the immediate term, making these shorter term investors happy as a result. Long term, do you think it's sustainable? Are you betting on these companies long term to live up to the multiples they're trading at today? Let me separate two things. First off, it's very easy to gang up on companies. I, I have some very specific criticisms. Uh, that is competing with suppliers is one criticism. Uh, the other is not really a criticism. It's saying, you know, I'm critical of the market for overvaluing these companies uh, based on short-term betting. Uh, it's not Jeff Bezos' fault that people want to throw money at him. Uh, he has, and, and I don't think he's doing bad things in order to make them uh, throw money at him. I do think that uh, 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 Amazon in general has done a lot. Uh, I mean, again, they are they are operating within the rules of an economy that I don't agree with in the sense that I think that there's a kind of um, deep hostility to workers in modern capitalism. You know, deep, uh, you, know, you know, this whole idea that all of the value that is possible to extract should be extracted for the purpose of corporate profits and shareholder value is a fundamentally antisocial idea. In my book, I actually describe our, our financial markets as the first rogue AI, hostile to humanity. You know, we literally tell our companies, you know, you know, treat people as a cost to be eliminated. And that's not, I don't think that's sustainable in the long term. But within that system, I don't see Amazon as a particularly bad actor. I don't see Google as a particularly bad actor. Uh, you know, if you compare them, for example, to, you know, pharma companies that, you know, peddled a product that they knew was harmful, that peddled a product that they actually uh, lobbied legislators uh, to uh, minimize the harms and risks of. You look at, you know, a hundred years of, of climate denial by, uh, you know, by oil companies. You look at, uh, you know, a uh, similar amount of, uh, of uh, it's not quite 100 years, but 70 years of denial by uh, tobacco companies. You know, tech comes off pretty well in that, in that measure, but our system is, is rotten. It's optimizing for the wrong thing. Hi, this is Alex from Winner Take All. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the content. Feel free to leave a comment, ask us questions, and definitely make sure to join us on our next live stream.